Looking at section 1.16, it's our last section of unit one, hip hip hooray. Um, this one works with the intermediate value theorem. And if you think of what this says, it's talking about values that are intermediate in between. So watch for that, that wording when we come to the theorem and explains the behavior of a function on an interval using the intermediate value theorem. This one actually is a pretty important theorem when we talk about AP calculus. There are about four theorems that are very important on the exam, and this is one of them. So one of the first important existence theorems that we will study in calculus is called the intermediate value theorem. Like all existence, existence theorems that we study, the IVT um, relies on the continuity of a function. So we must have a continuous function. Let's give a read through on this important theorem. If f is a continuous function on the closed interval a to b, and k is any number between f of a and f of b, there is at least one number c in, a, in the interval a to b such that f of c equals k. So this gets a little confusing and sometimes people have difficult time. First off, we must have continuity. Second thing, we must have some betweenness going on. Then we can come in with the conclusion. The conclusion tells us that there is a K such that, or a C such that F of C will yield that value K. Now, when I think about Y values and X values, I'm gonna read through this again. There was a lot of variables. F is a continuous function on a closed interval A to B. K is a number between F of A and F of B. To me, this means that y value, k is some y value that sits between f of a and f of b, but I don't know whether f of a is larger or smaller than f of b, so we'll just say it is between, so that we don't have to put any particular order to it, like I can't say um, this, because I don't know that f of a is smaller. It could be that, so between this means either. Next, um, there's in some number C in the interval such that F of C, and this is showing that C is an input. So that to me means that this is an X value. F of C is some X value. Looking at the picture, I think it'll help explain what the intermediate value theorem does. So I have F of A, some Y value. I have F of B, some Y value and K must be between F of A and F of B. If that is the case, and I have a continuous function on A to B, then that means that I'm guaranteed to find some C value that lies between A and B, where if I input C into my function, I get out that K value. And this particular function, it looks like we actually have three different C values that would yield that same K. If the function were discontinuous, we could have a jump discontinuity, and that jump could happen right over K, and therefore there is no uh, guarantee that K was between F of A and F of B, or there were, K could be between F of A and F of B, but there's no guarantee that there was some C value leading to that K. This is all empty. There's no C value that led to K there. So that is the reason for the continuity. If it's discontinuous, we might miss that spot.